Good morning. It's great to be back, having been on holiday, it's good to be back to share in the service this morning. If you're new and you've not been with us before, then you'll see that uh, down the side of your screen there's a white box and if you're not uh, the first person here, you'll see that there's some chat going on in there. If you want to chat with us, then you need to just type in the bottom box and when you press enter, for the very first time it will ask you for a nickname. So you could use your family name or any name um, and that then allows you to uh, join in with the chat that's going on in the box. You'll also see uh, that there's a tab at the bottom of your screen which is for Bible and you can read the Bible passage along with us there. Um, and there's also a button on your screen that says prayer. And we would love to pray with you. And we'll pray about anything. It takes you into a separate a box, a separate chat box with one of the hosts for today. It's not for everybody, it's just between you and that person who answers your request for prayer. There's no judgment, there's no um, sharing it with other people, it's between the two people who are there and we'll pray for anything. Sometimes people click it just to see what happens. Well, that's what happens. It'll take you into, it sends us a request to say that you're looking for prayer and somebody will respond to that and get back to you. So if you don't really want prayer, it's okay to click it and see, but just to let you know, somebody's going to come and uh, get you. If we don't uh, have anybody free at that moment, then please just be patient and somebody will respond to your request for prayer uh, as we go So today we had our first early service. That's a shorter service aimed at families. It's not a children's service. It's not just for children, but it's for everybody actually. We're all invited to go along to that one too. We're doing a trial for a few weeks to see how it goes. And we'll be using the same story in both of the services so that if you choose to watch both, you get some different ideas and different perspectives from each one. Tonight, uh, we have a time for prayer and we believe that prayer is important. In fact, that's the subject of our service today and that's at 6.45 and there's going to be a link for that uh, in the chat box and you can copy that to use it later or you can email me at minister at barclayviewfort.org.uk and I will send you the link for that. This week, schools start up again. Of course, for some of the staff and the pupils, they didn't really stop. But for most families, the last few months have been spent homeschooling. Maybe some parents have realised the true value of teachers. But they're going back this week and we want to think particularly about what that's going to look like. The start of a new school year, having had time away because of COVID and not really knowing what they're going back to. And we, we want to think today about how we can help our young people and other folks going into school to prepare well. All of us are settling back into a routine after that major time of change and challenge. Perhaps you're starting school for the first time, or you're going into a new year group or moving on to further study. Maybe as an adult, you're starting a new job or going back to work. And all of these things, it's normal to feel both excited and nervous at the same time. Sometimes we wonder what lies ahead in the days and the weeks to come. But there's a Bible verse that I want to use to encourage you today. It's Psalm 145, verse 18, and it says this. The Lord is close to everyone who prays, to all who truly pray to him. He gives those who fear him what they want. He listens when they cry and he saves them. This Bible verse is a wonderful reminder that God not only hears us when we pray, but he wants to come close to us and care for us and rescue us. God wants us to talk to him about everything. And so we're going to do that right now. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you that you're close when we talk to you. Thank you that you listen to us. That your son Jesus came to die to save us. 
that you love us deeply, more than we'll ever be able to understand. That you hear the cries of our heart. As we come together this morning, may we be aware of your presence. Help us to listen to your words from the Bible. Help us to know what you want to teach us. And would you give us hearts that long to obey you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now we're going to sing praise to God and thank him for hearing our prayers. And we're going to sing a song. It's called Build Your Kingdom Here. the Beaufort Church. We want to see God's kingdom being built wherever we are, around in the community, around the church and in the church, in us and through us. But now we're going to hear from Stephanie, our children and families worker, after which Katrina is going to read for us. Good morning everyone. Good morning to this Sunday and good morning to this Kids Talk, dear Kingdom Kids. 
and a warm welcome if you are here for the first time. I have a little game for us. If you would be queen or king for a day, what rules would you have us do? What rules would you have people do? If you would be queen or king for a day. Well, I made myself a little crown. Can you see it's pink, of course, and has little gemstones because I like pink and green. It's quite a nice color. So if I would be queen for one day, I would have everyone eat fruit. Uh, fruit are important. I love fruit, especially strawberries and raspberries. So I would have make everyone eat strawberries and raspberries. And if I would be queen, I would as have us all take walks. Because, I mean, it's not always beautiful weather outside, but I love taking walks. And I think everyone should take walks. And if I would be queen, I would have us all take three days off because rest is good for us. So, how about you? What would you have us do if you were queen or king for a day? Now, although my rules sound quite sensible, not everyone can take three days off, can they? What would we do if we are hurt and the doctor says, well, my day is off? Or what would we do if someone has a raspberry or strawberry allergy, but they have to eat strawberries and raspberries because I like it? As a queen, I had some silly decrees or rules. In the Bible, there is a story about a king and his helper Daniel or his advisor, which means Daniel gave the king advice in important questions while he was ruling the country. Now, one day the king made a rule that everyone in his country had to follow. And this rule said that you had to worship no one else but the king himself. So people had to pray to the king and had to pray to no one else but the king and had to praise him. Whew. That was a pretty difficult situation for Daniel because Daniel trusted and loved God. And although he knew about that rule of the king, he continued to pray to God and he continued to trust in God. He didn't praise king. He respected the king, but he didn't worship him like a god. One day, the other advisors, who were a bit jealous and turned green when Daniel entered the room, well, they told on Daniel. And so the king was left with nothing else but to punish Daniel. So Daniel, and I bet some of you will remember the story now, was put in a lion's den. So in a lion's den is not a comfortable place to be in. It sounds as horrible as it is. It's a hole with hungry lions in it. Whew. And in the face of that chaos, Daniel didn't try to climb up the walls hectically. He didn't run around, around the lions, no. He fell on his knees and prayed. He prayed to God. I want to stop the story here for a moment. Because isn't that brave? Isn't that faithful? Daniel falling on his knees and praying in the face of danger, in the face of 
fear because I bet he was afraid. But despite his fears, despite the danger, he continued praying, continued to pray for trusting in God, that God is there. He was talking with God. And so the angel, so it says, held the lion's mouth and Daniel stayed unharmed. Now, you guys are going back to school. We have some teachers in our congregation. Maybe if you click in for the first time, you are a teacher as well. And you kids, you are going back to school as well, as well. And that is very exciting and beautiful because you're going to see your friends again. You're going to see your teachers again. <sighs> Wonderful. But maybe you feel a bit uncomfortable as well. It's a bit like going back to school and it's feeling a bit like the first time. Things are a bit different too because you will see people with faith face masks in school, maybe your teacher even. Maybe some of your students will wear face masks. And that can make you a bit uncomfortable. So I want to encourage us that in the face of what seems quite chaotic, what seems quite frightful, that we keep on praying that we keep on praying for the kids, that we keep on praying for the teachers, and that we keep on praying for the families. That we keep on trusting that God is in this with us, in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of our fear, and that he takes care of us. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know what decrees or what laws will change within the next weeks. But we know that God is in this with us. And I want you to pack this wisdom, this knowledge in your backpack as well. That God is with you on your first day of school and the next one and the one after. And that we keep on praying and that you keep on praying for your friends and teachers. Knowing and trusting that God is with us in this together. Not abandoning us. Let us pray. Abba Father, thank you for the children and the teachers who are going back to school again. And we remember and pray all the children in the world who have no school to go to. Please encourage our school staff, the teachers, the people, the cleaners who keep the housing safe. Bless them as they do a brilliant job keeping the schools running. Help all the boys and girls who are starting school for the first time and who are very nervous about going to school. Help them to settle in quickly and knowing and trusting that you are with them. And help us that we, when we are worried like Daniel, that we remember that we can turn to you and ask for help when we just speak to you. Thank you, Abba, that you are close to us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The reading today is from Daniel 6, verses 1 to 12. Daniel in the Den of Lions. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor neg negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it is something to do with the law of his God. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisers and governors have all agreed that the king should issue, issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, your majesty, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room with the windows open towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had, had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any God or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the reading today was about Daniel. He lived about 600 years before Jesus was even born, and he was a refugee. His family had been taken captive by an enemy army, and they lived hundreds of miles from their home. Earlier, Stephanie asked what you would do if you were king or queen for a day. Well, King Darius was the ruler of a huge kingdom and so he had lots of people to help and advise him about making laws and how to manage and look after his kingdom. It's a bit like what happens in school. Your head teacher is the one who's in charge but he or she will ask other people to help them so that the school runs smoothly and well. Perhaps some of you here today might help a teacher or a head teacher acting as monitors or mediators or buddies to younger children. In secondary school you might be a prefect or a head of house, maybe even head boy or head girl. Hopefully like Daniel you're given responsibility because you can be trusted and people think well of you. Daniel stood out from the crowd. He was trustworthy. He worked hard, he wasn't lazy and he didn't cheat. I wonder in school what that might look like. I suppose it might just be that you do work hard, you do your homework and you work well in class, that you're not late for class, that you get your homework in on time, that you help other people, that you keep your promises and that you listen well, that you're respectful and kind to others. And if you do those things, people will notice. Daniel loved and trusted God and that shaped who he was. Daniel always worked hard. He did this so that his life would bring honour to God, not so that he would become rich or famous. God gave Daniel success. 
he caused the king to give Daniel promotion. You see, God loved Daniel and Daniel loved God. Daniel allowed God to be in charge and as a result, God was the one who was shaping Daniel's life for him. God is pleased when we live for him rather than living for ourselves. We might hear people around us say that you can map out your own future, that your future is in your own hands, but the Bible tells us that only God knows the future and we should put our future in his hands. We should be like Daniel and trust God to shape our lives for us because the more time we spend with God, the more he changes our thinking and our attitudes to be more like Jesus. And so, three times a day, every day, Daniel got down on his knees and he prayed. Wow, he didn't, he didn't just pray a quick prayer in the morning, like I do sometimes, or, or a brief thank you prayer at night. He didn't just say, well, thanks for the food, amen. Because he prayed often, he became the kind of person that God wanted him to be. His strength and trust were in God, not in himself. His focus wasn't on what great things he could do, but what great things God could do through him. Remember back in the reading, when the king made a new law that put people who prayed to God in danger? Oh, did, did Daniel stop praying? No, not at all. Did he pray to King Darius instead? No, absolutely not. When he heard about the new rule, he did what he usually did. He went to his room and he knelt down and he prayed. So even when the king's new law was introduced, Daniel prayed and thanked God, just like he always did. Taking everything to God in prayer was normal for Daniel. And he wasn't going to stop now. He thanked God, just like he usually did, before asking him for his help. We're going to sing again a song that says, Though I feel afraid of territory unknown. And it's about times when actually we are anxious about the future, but we know that we can trust God. Prayers of intercession this morning, I have sought to adapt prayers offered on the website of the Scottish Episcopal Church and prayers crafted by the late Bill MacDonald, a former moderator of the Church of Scotland. So we pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, 
who so loved the world that you sent your only begotten Son for its salvation. We confess our part in the sin of all humanity, by which your pleasant places have been made into a wilderness. Your gifts have been perverted and misused. Your children have been divided from one another by suspicion and hatred and ignorance. Hold steady before us the vision of a world of people and nations, as people with one another, because they have found their peace in you. And guide the leaders of the nations we to yearn for and strive after the peace, which is your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, you know that over these past months, our lives have been dominated by our fears and concerns about the course of the pandemic. And so again this morning, we remember before you the key workers, for all medical staff and hospital workers who go to work knowing the risks that they face on a daily basis. For scientists and medical researchers as they seek ways to prevent and cure. For social workers protecting the vulnerable. For care workers providing contact and support for those who have no other help. For teachers concerned that their for their pupils as they prepare to return to school. For farmers, delivery workers and shopkeepers as they provide our daily needs and the cleaners as they fight the spread of infection. We pray too for our communities, remembering in particular the elderly, confined to their homes and separated from family, for children deprived of their school and many of their friends, for those who have lost their source of income, and for those who fear for their home, or those who have no home at all. Lord, hear our prayers in this time of illness and infection, of isolation, fear and uncertainty for the sick and those weighed down by pain, distress, loneliness and anxiety, for all who care for them conscious of the risks they bear and for those who have the responsibility for public health and social order. Finally, Father, we pray for our congregation and church here at Barclay Viewforth, for David, our new minister at last installed in the manse, for our ministry team as they plan the way forward in the midst of the pandemic, and for the Kirk session as they strive to unite and support the congregation and the local community in these unprecedented times and to make known God's love in Jesus Christ. Hear these our prayers and the unspoken prayers of our hearts. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. In the early service, I asked if anyone could guess what, uh, what this is. And it is a blanket. It's a blanket that was gifted to me by a couple in the Navajo church in Loop in Arizona. And this is how you're meant to wear it. It goes over the one shoulder like that. It's given to people as a mark of respect to leaders. And it's a, a very generous gift to have been given. I use it to remember the people in that congregation. But it's also my prayer blanket. Some people have a particular place where they go to pray. Daniel always prayed looking out of his window. And some people like me have something that they wear or use as a cover. So when I was in Prestwick, I used to go into the church and I had to unfold it to make it bigger. And I used to wrap myself like this, to wrap myself up in the blanket. And sometimes I would put it right over my, right over my head and I would lie on the chancel right at the front of the church. And I would just spend time praying. Or sometimes I would just put it right around me and wrap myself up in it. It also keeps you warm in the winter when the church is cold. But there's something good about having a place or a time or an action that gets you ready to spend time with God. But we know we can pray anytime and anywhere. But there's something that just makes me think, ah, now I'm going to pray. I remember going to meet one Navajo man whose name is Hector. Now Hector lived in what is called a Hogan in the middle of a dry and dusty bit of the desert. He was a farmer and life was hard for him and his family. We went for a walk along a track that runs away from his house into the desert and he told us this story. When he was much younger he struggled with life and, and alcohol. He had decided that he was going to kill himself so he started walking along the track and as he was walking and he was coming to the top of a cliff, a cliff where you can see for nearly 70 miles, the view is amazing. He told us that as he was going, he called out to God saying that if God was real he had to do something to stop Hector throwing himself over the edge of the cliff. Well, the Holy Spirit came and filled Hector so much that he promised right there to follow Jesus for the rest of his days. It was an incredible story from this old man and we were all moved by the power of it. But the minister who was with us pointed to a flat stone at the top of the hill. 
and there were two small indentations in it. And although Hector was really embarrassed for us to know, we were told that the indentations were from where Hector came to pray. That place was so important to him that he came back again and again and again to pray. I wonder if you have somewhere like that or something like this blanket that you use to help you as you meet with God. Daniel was in trouble. We aren't told how he felt, but we can see from his actions that he was calm and collected. I would have been terrified. He knew that he had done nothing wrong. He didn't panic. He just showed absolute trust in God. Why? Well, I think it's probably because he had spent so much time speaking to God in prayer. He knew that he wasn't alone. He knew that God was with him. He didn't go to the king for help. He asked God for help. See, prayer helps us to know God and what he's like. Remember again the Bible verse that we read at the start of our service? I'm going to read it again. The Lord is close to everyone who prays, to all who truly pray to him. He gives those who fear him what they want. He listens when they cry and he saves them. God was close to Daniel. And that made all the difference. We don't read of Daniel protesting or making a fuss, unlike King Darius, who was now in a panic. Daniel's prayers didn't just save Daniel. You see, there's a twist in the story. Prayer saved the king and other people as well. Darius really liked Daniel and the Bible tells us that he realised that he had made a terrible mistake in passing this law and he tried so hard to rescue Daniel. The Bible says he made every effort until sunset. All day he tried to find a way to save Daniel and yet he came to the point of realising that even as king he couldn't do anything. He had to carry out the law that he had issued because royal decrees couldn't be changed. And even though he was king, he was powerless. So he had Daniel thrown into the lion's den. He couldn't save Daniel. Only God could save Daniel. Suddenly, as Daniel was being flung into the den of lions, King Darius realised that only God could save Daniel. And he shouted, may the God you serve all the time save you. And King Darius showed the first step it takes to truly trust in God, recognising that God is in control and we are not. He is the only one who can save. So, after a sleepless night, the king hurried to the lion's den, desperately hoping that God had heard his prayer. And God had answered the prayer. Amazingly. Miraculously, Daniel was completely safe and unharmed. What an amazing sight that must have been. God had saved him. God had heard both Daniel and Darius' prayer. The impossible had happened. Daniel was alive, not dead. Only God could have done it. Darius had seen firsthand the power of God and he was overjoyed. And so Darius came to trust God for himself. But not only that, he then declared that everyone else in his kingdom should only ever worship God too. Prayer saves and prayer saved Daniel. Prayer saved King Darius. And we don't know, but if other people also began to pray to God, prayer would save them. What an encouragement that is to us today. Prayer shapes who we are and prayer saves us. That's amazing. On this Back to School with God Sunday, we want to pray for our children, teachers and schools. It's a privilege to be able to support schools in prayer, particularly as we all know what they've been through and this difficult time that they've had. So today, we're thinking about anyone who's connected with a nursery, a primary or a secondary school in any way whatsoever. As a pupil or a staff member, a scripture union group leader, a parent, a grandparent, a cleaner, a janitor or a parent council member, whatever it is, or if you even attended a school, we want to pray for you. So all of us can take part and at different points I'm going to say these words, Lord hear our prayer. And I would ask you to respond wherever you are by saying the words that will appear on the screen 
Thank you, God, that you are close to us when we pray. And so let's pray together. Father God, we pray for our nurseries and those who work in them. Thank you, Lord, for watching over our little children. Thank you that you love them. We pray that you'll help nursery staff in the amazing job they do in creating happy places where our children can be safe and cared for well. Would you please help the children to settle, to make friends and learn to love and help one another. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, that you are close to us when we pray. Father God, thank you for our primary schools and all those who work in them. Thank you that we're able to get back to school again and we remember in prayer all the children in the world who've no school to go to. Please encourage our school staff who do such a brilliant job of running our schools and teaching our children. Help them to adjust to a new routine. Please help all the boys and girls who are starting school for the first time or who are nervous about returning to school. Help them to settle quickly and know that you are with them. When we're worried like Daniel, remind us that we can turn to you and ask for help. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, that you are close to us when we pray. And Father God, we thank you for the Bible story of Daniel and for his good character, shaped by prayer. Lord, we pray the same might be said of those who work or study in our secondary schools. We pray that we may be people who can be trusted, who work hard, are respectful and kind. Lord, we are grateful for our education. Help us to appreciate those who teach us. As we go back to school, please help those who are anxious or afraid. Strengthen our school community so that we might help and support one another. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, that you are close to us when we pray. And Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we've been able to share together today. For the reminder that prayer shapes and prayer saves. Remind us to pray for our schools, those who work in them, and the children and young people who attend them. We pray for scripture union groups that meet in them, asking that pupils will grasp what a great God you are. We lift all our young people to you. We love them and we want to see them flourish at school and beyond. Lord, thank you for sustaining them through the months spent at home. Help them now to readjust and to gladly benefit from being part of a church and school family once more. We ask you to bless those who are off to college or to university, that they would make their own friends and become part of their own community and where they might honour you as they do. We ask you to bless our community and our role as a church within it. May our prayers make a difference. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, God that you're close to us when we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. The chat will continue for a little while here and in a few minutes we'll be on Zoom so you have time to go and grab a drink and come back and join us. There'll be a link for that in the box but we hope you have a great week and that those of you who are going back to school will be blessed and encouraged. <laughs>